Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we're checking out three knives from Blade Runner HQ. And shout out to Blade Runner HQ for loaning these to me at my request. Uh, they have some really cool inventory, and I wanted to check it out. And they were kind enough to loan me some of their inventory so that I could share the goods with you. So today we're gonna to be talking about three awesome knives that I think you should definitely check out. And if you wanna head on over to their website, they are all currently available. Let's start off with the least expensive to most expensive. We've got the Kun Wu Zen. And <laughs> guys, this is the first time I've had a Kun Wu on the channel. It's kind of interesting uh, because Kun Wu has been doing some great things for a hot minute. A little bit about this knife. First of all, it is $215. And what does your hard-earned $215 get you? A overall length of about 8.3 inches. The blade is made out of Elmac steel that has been heat treated between 60 to 62 HRC. Let's keep it real. 60 to 62 is amazing for LMAX, and it's really nice to see a manufacturer going like that. We have this orange peel titanium handle scale material with the with a single-sided captive pivot, and that pivot collar appears to be Timascus. I could be wrong, I'm not entirely sure, but that's what it looks like to me. It's running on ceramic bearings, and we have nice features such as the 3D milled titanium pocket clip. It has a 3D milled titanium backspacer, lanyard hole for those of you who think that you need it, although honestly on this one, I get a nice full four finger grip. The spine is sweet because it features both jimping and crowning on the spine here. So it's super comfortable. The ergos on here are impressive and we even have a bit of a finger choil. The finger choil is nice for a beautiful choked up grip and it indexes pretty well also. Balance feels great. Overall weight on this bad boy is gonna be coming in around 4.2 ounces, which for a full size eight plus inch knife is not too shabby. 215 bucks, Kun Wu is absolutely killing it. And I think that this is one that a lot of people will be able to appreciate. Next up is a slip joint. And I don't typically do a whole lot of slip joints on here, but this is one that I've been wanting to check out ever since they were teased at the last Blade Show. This is the Heretic Knives Gin, and it's an American-made slip joint. And before you start thinking that this might be too expensive, I'll put it to you like this. This is around the same price range that you would pay for your Jack Wolf knives, well, anything. This specific knife comes in at $340, although you can get different variations at different price points. So far, this is the most expensive variant that I've seen so far for their production models. We have this beautifully vicious sheep's foot blade, and it is a partial serration. You can, of course, get it with a full plain edge or a full serrated edge, if that's your thing. It is featuring basket weave carbon fiber, a DLC coated magna cut blade, 3D milled titanium pocket clip, and it just looks fantastic. When you think of slip joints, you're not typically thinking of a knife that looks like this. It's brutal, and I really appreciate the fact that they're doing it differently. How's the walk and talk? I'll say this. The springs are not super stiff. Uh, they are less stiff than what you get on something like a QSP Hedgehog, but they are easy to actuate, and they do lock up enough to give you some confidence that when you're tearing through just about anything with this, you're not going to have any problems. Slip joints are knives that I think are pretty good for everyone's general EDC uses. You know, if you're someone that uses your knife primarily, for cutting into boxes, opening your mail, you know, cutting the loose string off of a shirt or a piece of clothing, or maybe you just want to do some quick food prep. These will definitely get the job done. And if you like a style that doesn't look like your traditional slip joint, this could very well be the one for you. It's really encouraging to see a company like Heretic uh, do a knife like this because it's going to appeal to people that might actually like a slip joint, but just don't like that traditional look. This is definitely a tempting version of a knife and the blade geometry is super thin, and that edge is very, very sticky. And lastly is a knife that I don't think anyone's seen featured on a channel before. These were teased at last year's Blade Show as well. This is the Beans Blades 
Mini Warrior. And this is a knife that I checked out on the website and I knew I had to get it in my hands because it doesn't necessarily look like, well, doesn't look like anything else out there. Now, some of you might be saying, doesn't that aesthetic kind of remind you of a sharpened pry bar? That's kind of what I thought initially too. That being said, this knife is actually very well designed and I was pleasantly surprised getting it in hand because it is not what I thought it would be. The pictures kind of make this look to be very thick and not very wieldy, but actually the edge geometry is rather good. Look at the size of that bevel. That edge bevel is wide enough where you actually know it's going to slice rather well. And the spine of the blade is actually no thicker than it is on my American Blade Works Model 1. It features a hollow grind Tonto, and this Tonto geometry is beautifully done for someone that actually pounds their knives into things. Check out the thickness on the spine of the blade and how far it follows to the tip. And while that might not be as good for slicing, it does mean that it's rather robust. And if you do some heavy work with your knife, this one's not going to run the risk of snapping off at the tip. This is definitely a knife that you could in fact punch into something and not necessarily worry about it breaking. The Mini Warrior by Derek Beans is actually based off of his fully custom fixed blade, uh, the Mini Warrior. This is just the folding version, and they do, of course, have full-size versions of this knife as well. What immediately stood out to me was just how silky smooth that action is. It's running on ceramic bearings, and it, it glides shut. The OEM for this knife is Riot, and this specific one features titanium handle skills with a fat carbon green jungle wear overlay. Although if you don't want to spend quite as much, you can get one with the micarta. Now, depending upon which variant you go for, if you go for the one that has the fat carbon overlay, these are not cheap. They will generally cost you about $460. You can drop that down to about $375 if you get one with the micarta overlay. And I actually think that that's rather fair. Now, before you run to my comment section and say, whoa, 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 roll shambo, $460 bucks, I can get real made knives for under that price. The reason why I believe that this specific version is so expensive is because this is a first production run and Blade Runner HQ is the only website that I actually saw retailing these. So if you didn't know, the way that it works when it comes to OEM deals is that the larger amount that you order, the better deal they give you. And the lower amount that you order, the more you're going to pay. And so because this is a low quantity, limited quantity run, first production run, I'm not necessarily surprised at the $460 price tag that actually falls in line with what I would expect for a small batch order. However, this has all the trappings of a very premium knife. We've got titanium, we've got M390, we have ceramic ball bearings and some stupidly silky action. I will say this, this is the smoothest, glassiest action that I felt on a knife all year round and it is very addictive it clicks into place the detent is very well done and it has this full body length fuller which you can also use for deployment as well so if you're not big into flipper tabs no worries you can of course use the fuller and it is actually meant as a deployment option. We have a 3D milled titanium pocket clip, 3D milled titanium backspacer. It's a frame lock. The fit and finish on here is superb. No less than what I would expect from Riot. And quite honestly, this one was a very, very pleasant surprise. Now, if you watch this long, I actually have a pleasant surprise for you. I recently reached the 7,000 subscriber mark and Blade Runner HQ was cool and kind enough and generous enough to actually give me some swag to include in the giveaway. So for example, if you like this Hank, I will actually be including a few of these in the 7,000 subscriber giveaway. It's a really exciting milestone to hit and I hope that you can join me. That giveaway will be taking place on the next Wednesday live stream, which was happening April 3rd. So please make sure to tune in at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Wednesday, April 3rd, and you could, of course, be entered to win in the giveaway. We'll be giving away some Hanks. We'll be giving away some keychains. We're going to throw in a knife. It'll be a good time, and I hope that I see you there.
But let me know in the comment section down below, between these three knives, which one is your favorite? Do you own any of these? Are you actually looking to check them out? If you are looking to check them out, please make sure to go on over to Blade Runner HQ and check them out. I will be including the links in the description down below, just in case anyone would like to. These are non-affiliate links, but if you do order from them, it definitely helps out a local American business. With that being said, if you want to watch more awesome knife and EDC content, go ahead and click on one of the videos that pops up next.